Kathy Vick, Deeply Awake, and I have a couple of addendums to the last thing that I did. So, I was saying I was going to explain karma, and then I explained love. Oh, well. I find them to be very similar, don't you? Anyway, I wanted to explain karma just a little bit because, uh, you know, it's been popping up as a, as a topic for quite some time and I have done a couple of unreleased videos on it because it just wasn't time. Um, I just didn't really feel it was uh, clear enough for me. Um, and that's the one thing I really am proud of with this work is that it's, it's kind of, it's field tested, it's road tested. Because if it doesn't work, and I'm kind of picky, you might have been able to tell that by now, about just the way things work. If a thought doesn't really, if it's not sturdy, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bandy about it. I'm not going to, whatever that is, I'm not going to get on its bandwagon. And um, that's why I am not a Catholic nun. There was a flaw in, I mean, I'm not a Roman Catholic, so they won't offer me communion. What, what the hell? That's the most unloving thing I've ever heard of. What, and Jesus is the person that you're, what? Well, yeah, okay, I can't be a nun, damn it. I couldn't be a Lutheran because I couldn't get behind original sin, so they have their own nunnery and I couldn't do that. And I don't do the Buddhism thing because it's just, it's just too OCD for me. It, 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 and it just doesn't have the heart I need. I do really dig that Buddha was a badass. He almost killed himself to find himself. Thought that was awesome. Once I found that out, once I found out he was a badass, I didn't have any more arguments with all of his rules. But I just don't, it just makes me feel chilly and sad inside. <laughs> Give me Zen anytime. <laughs> I don't mind a mind fuck as long as I, am, I have an orgasm. <laughs> and I always, always come with Zen. So there you go. Ooh, 222. Ooh, I was just salty. And the universe approves, so. <laughs> so anyway. Um, I wanted to amend a couple things. So I was talking about karma. Well, is love karma? Well, I don't know. I don't think it is. I don't think it has to be. That's that's. I'm I'm a revolutionary because I think actually that love is when two people. I really dug what Sting said. Sting said that he and his woman friend, I forget who, um, Trudy or whatever. They're not going to get married because every single day they're making a decision whether they want to be together. I thought, damn, sign me up for that. Sign me up for that. That is what I'm talking about. And it's not like, oh, I wonder if you love me today. It's not like that. It's like, you know, show up. <laughs> show up for yourself at the very least. But fucking show up. Because I think, you know, a ring's got sling on my finger and uh, my my dude's finger. It's like, we, we just, oh, we don't have to show up anymore. Oh, my God. The quicksand. Oh, this is the quicksand that I was warned about as a child. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like that. And that is certainly not what uh, most relationships are. They're karmic. So no wonder I talked about love. Because woo, that'll get you every time. Oh baby, so you gotta you gotta kind of have some discernment as to what you're walking into, and I uh, I've, I'm a utter failure at that. Oh well, no I'm not. I'm really great at it actually. I just really enjoy unconventional relationships. It's kind of been my thing, and I'm I I I very much love the people who love me and loved me and whatever. So, anyway, karma is when um, there's an agreement. I really think it's the hurly-burly stuff. It's um, the idea of um, the karma. I really do think karma is um, the handing over or the taking on of responsibility of another person's pain. I think that's a really, really good definition of it. And... Um, but I, it's also, uh, so I, I think that, in the, but it's, in there are karmic setups. 
that's different than creating karma. There are some, I mean, young souls, their job is to bounce into walls, and when you tell them to go left, they go right. And when you tell them they should be quiet, they holler and scream. And basically, they just don't know what the hell they're doing. And um, so that's a young soul. And they are like a karma central because they're always hurting somebody. Karma is about just harm, doing harm, basically. It's the, it's, and I, so I think really I'm, the service to self, service to other engine might be that karmic engine of the setups. And it's also, I think, the coding that Boron talks about. It's also uh, all about morphogenic fields. And it all, f five, five, five. <whistles> it all comes together, really. So karma, to, to just bandy that word about, is perhaps, uh, if not immature, then perhaps just a bit uh, inarticulate. And maybe that's why that beautiful exposition about love took place. Who knows? Who knows? What I do know is um, that there, that's one of the things that I wanted to say. I think that uh, for me, karma is when I, and that's why I don't, I, I, I'm very careful about how I, I spend my energy and who I spend it around. So I, I, I don't engage in harm. Um, and if there's harm being done, it has to be meaningful and purposeful and um, appropriate to the situation. And that's that. I just don't engage in it. So then I, you know, that's that's one of the reasons that I kind of think that it's uh, what I, it really is truly a monadic year because I want to prove to myself that I can be good to myself because by neglecting myself, I'm kind of being harmful to myself when I'm just not very attentive to myself. It's it's not like I'm cutting on myself or anything like that, but is, is, it, is it really nice? Is it what grandma would do? No. So I think, you know, so that's kind of neat. <laughs> it's kind of obvious. <laughs> it's one of those hallmark moments where you've scaled a mountain and from that mountain ledge, from the very tippy top, you scream something like, I don't know, I am God's and God is mine. And then, you know, you walk down the mountain and from various ledges you holler it and it just feels different. And you get to the bottom of it and you just think, oh wow, that's a, that's a nice sentiment. Oh, that's a nice card. It's like that. It depends on where you're at. Ooh, 808. Zero 08. Zero 08. Ooh, I'm having so much fun with multiples today. So the other addendum was the little story I had to tell. <laughs> it's important. And Jinky's so cute. So the story is, um, I have this very surprising conversation with someone who I thought had been an adversary and who had actually not been entirely nice to me, but had been as nice as she possibly could given the circumstances she was in, which I was completely unaware of. Ooh. Humility? Would you like that served warm or cold? <laughs> Humility is always warm. It's always good going down. Kind of spicy sometimes. And um, so she said that she, um, after she got divorced, she decided that she kind of took a review of her life and realized that perhaps her picker was broken. <laughs> and that perhaps this involved a change in behavior. Ooh. Can an old dog learn a new tricks? Mm. So, I mean, you know, when you when your when your status has changed, and you still want connection, you go on dates, right? And so she she chose people who she wouldn't have normally chosen, and or she said yes to people, and she said yes to this person who she normally would have said no to, and um, it was a really good thing. And so one night, and she said, she, she made it a point to act in ways that were opposite 
of how she had normally acted in those situations. She just became hyper aware and then did the opposite of what she normally, so she was in her discomfort zone. A zone that um, my, my once guru, uh, Richard said, you know, he talked about that. That's, um, it, the, and I learned it in nursing too, the human body and the human psyche goes toward comfort, what is comfortable. And doing something new is what, gang? That would be uncomfortable. So, you have to be able to tolerate a little bit of discomfort. And you do that if you know that perhaps there's going to be a different outcome. It's very, it's been really hard. And it's been, I mean, I'm, I've broken out of so many beliefs about my own social abilities and true, you know, social disabilities to some degree. And um, it's, it's that kind of doing just doing it, just um, being uncom being okay with being uncomfortable. Yeah, and and it may not yield a lot of a lot of pots of gold. Maybe not. So it's still better than what you did before, isn't it? It's an improvement, right? So so what if you don't you know have a pot of gold every time? So what? So what if it's a disaster? So you got a good story, but you're doing something new. So anyway, that's what she did. And she made herself behave in ways she wouldn't have behaved. And there she is, a few months into a relationship with someone who is super duper nice to her. And she's not So she says she's on the couch texting her son saying, I just don't think this is going to work out. I just don't think that this is, I just am so uncomfortable. I just don't think this is going to work out. And he said, Mom, breathe deep. Just relax. You're in the right place. Just calm down. And I thought that was the most awesome story. You know? It, it is not uh, easy to do new things because we are biologically wired to want to be comfortable. I would much prefer laying down in bed to most social activities to be quite frank <laughs> I think a book is a really really good companion but what I've found is that if I'm um, not showing up I'm uh, I'm not participating and um, there was a time when obviously I needed to generate some light on my own didn't I la la and I think that's what you know the the maybe I'm done with this deeply awake thing is uh, I'm beginning to, you know, consider because um, I, I really, in the back of my mind always it was, well, what's going to happen when, uh, not if, when um, all this is done, then what? Because it was just like a chronicle of pain for somebody. It's just like, but I mean, so many miracles and so many sparkles and so many insights and oh my God, it's so pretty. But still, it's just, so when, when it takes, then what happens? Well, then I get to go have some fun. And, um, and who knows? But it's, it's not, you know, in the meantime, sit down and write, darn it. And I'm so glad I did. And it's, what's really weird looking back on it is there are certain, I've used it as a, I, I don't have much of a sense of time, and, and this has been such a nice chronicle to have, and there have been times that have been really, really, like, potent, and um, then I've looked back through the years, and how funny sometimes um, the same thing's coming through year, year, year. Woo! It's really cool. It's really, really pretty amazing stuff. So, um, oh, I want to, I know what I want to end with. <laughs>
it's not I don't I don't consider it showing off. What I consider it is um, where things are going to be going, actually. Um, I have a... Well, I have a couple of superpowers, but um, I'm not going to disclose them here. But um, but I, there's a superpower I want, and it's one I've discussed. I want to be able to emit odors so that everyone can smell them. It's really what I want. I want to be able to just imagine eucalyptus and uh, and smell it. And if someone else, you know, would would really benefit from that, that they can smell it too. I really would love to do that. I love to hit the room with with rose sometime. Why not? You know? Hey, do you smell rose? What are you talking about? You must be hallucinating. <laughs> That's using my power for evil. So anyway, I've always wanted to do that. I mean, for a really super long time. Since the, since the beginning. Since the beginning. And so, um, anyway. And I've, I think I've, I've, I've told this story once. Did I do all my addendums? I think so. Karma? There's a lot more to it than just that word karma. We use it like a dirty word sometimes. And uh, I, I think that it requires a bit of uh, unpacking and qualifying. So anyway, where was I? Oh, hell. Hills have acre. Oh, it was a really good story too. Don't tell me I lost it. Because if I lose it, then sometimes I, I will abandon a, a video, and I don't really want to do that. Shit. Oh, well. Oh, ye of little brain. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it back. Let me just babble for a minute. Maybe see it. Maybe I can get it back. Because I, I was talking about, um, I don't know. I, all I see is orange. I'm seeing rusty orange. Hmm. Isn't that something? Golly. Oh, well. It just proves I have more stories to tell than I, I have um, capacity to, to tell. How do you like that? How do you like that? Instead, I'll tell you about the rusty orange. I will. We'll go to 20. So I was talking to Melissa, and, um, and they came through. And they're quite potent when they come through with Melissa. And what they kept talking about at the end was um, to imagine in uh, one's pelvis and, and up one's uh, spine this uh, lava like, but it's solid, but it's lava. And it's like this engine of creativity. And it's just bursting and bursting and bursting. And I, I only see it to the level of like the um, the solar plexus. I don't see it hitting the heart. I don't know why. I need to work on that. I guess. I don't know. Do I? And um, But anyway, they kept talking about that. And um, they kept going up on about that, you know, this is about um, really, really connecting with one. And this is the energy with which one creates. And that's what I was told in the in, with the teachers. Because I was getting rid of a lot of stuff. And they really encourage that. They encourage you to get rid of stuff um, because whatever you keep around you physically, you're tying, uh, or you're creating with orange energy. They said. And then I saw that lava thing. Huh? That's interesting. Um, that this is the this is the it 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 requires your energy to 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 populate it. Um, you populate your reality. This is how I always have seen it, day to day. Um, and if you live in utter chaos, then you know that's that what's what's happening, and that's that's fine. But <laughs> I heard Maria Bamford do something really funny about that. She watches the animal orders, and she says that you know, it just it's it's sort of um, it, it's I don't know. She was she's so funny. Oh, I love her. Um, it's, it was kind of formulaic. It's like, yeah, my wife died, <laughs> and then I got a rooster. 
<laughs> you know from there where it's gonna go. <laughs> my son, oh god, my son loves all those shows. <laughs> he loves pimple popping things too. We we enjoyed Christmas <laughs> watching pimple Doctor Pimple Popper. It was great. Those are my addendums. I hope that you enjoyed them. I I, th I think that's really all I had to say. Damn it! I wish I could remember my story. Oh well, it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't necessary. So there you go. That's how I'm gonna roll. That's it. Thanks. Bye.